Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. What if I told you that there may be a way to escape the tribulations ahead? That there is a seal of protection that God places on his favorite children to save them from catastrophes. Among Christians, some say that the faithful must pass through the same cross that Jesus Christ passed through. However, others point out that events appear in the scriptures in which God places a seal on his favorite children to save them from the catastrophes that he will allow to pass. For some, there is nothing to do, tribulation will come to us like any neighbor's son. While others say that we can achieve being marked with the seal and be protected in the tribulation. In this video, we are going to explore the biblical background of God's seals of protection. Let's see what those marked with the seal get and how a person can achieve being marked. Do you want to learn how you can be protected in the tribulations that lie ahead? Check this video out and share it. In Revelation 7, chapters 2-3, a mysterious seal appears that the angel of God imprints on the elect when four angels launch the plagues on earth. These angels represent the four horsemen of the apocalypse who will bring destruction to the earth. Then the sealing of the saints occurs so that they do not suffer the consequences of the tribulation that the angels will send. So, John's vision shows divine protection of those faithful to God before catastrophic events are unleashed on the earth. It should not be confused with the seal with which we are marked in our baptism, which is a sign of belonging to the people of God. Because not all baptized who live at the time when the purification of the great tribulations of the earth occurs will take God's side. While those who remain faithful to God's command must be protected by the Lord. Therefore, the seal is a kind of new baptism for protection in apocalyptic times. This seal would be placed on the foreheads of the elect and would signify supernatural salvation. It would seem to have two dimensions, an external visibility and an internal dimension. Because with this impression, an effect is produced in the deepest parts of the soul, an inner real presence which causes a change in a new relationship with the transcendent being that is God, which acts as a deliberate contrast to the application of the mark of the beast. In some way, it should be seen as an antidote to the appearance of the mark of the beast which will mark the people who support him with the number of the Antichrist. Now, is this seal something real? Has God already used it in history? Sealing is not a modern invention nor something that has only spiritual consequences. In Ezekiel 9 verse 4, for example, God instructs a man dressed in linen to put a mark on the foreheads of those who mourn and cry because of the abominations in Jerusalem. These markings will be protected and destruction is released upon the city. In Exodus 12 verse 7, we see that God marked the houses of his people, people in Egypt, with the blood of the Lamb to preserve their firstborn from death when the exterminating angel passed over the Egyptians. We also see this type of immunization in the brazen serpent of Numbers 21 raised by Moses in the desert, which upon looking at it immunized against the poison of the snakes that bit the Jews during their pilgrimage to the Promised Land. But the seal is also spiritual because those faithful to God remain immune to the poison of moral corruption that infects the vast majority of men which makes them rot in the poison of Satan. And what will the seal be like? Maria V. Torda received the message from our Lord that it will not be a material sign that makes the faithful immune to the verdict of the angels. It will be written in characters invisible to the human eye, but it will be clearly visible to the angels of our Lord. It will be in our spirits and will denote our works, and it will make us worthy of salvation. Therefore, the seal will equate kings with beggars, women with men, priests with warriors, as it relates to our relationship with God. And what will the sealed ones experience? In 1999, the Nigerian seer Barnabas Noy received a message from the Lord stating that with the seal, the weak souls will become brave because they will see that they are surrounded by the heavenly armies. Those marked with the seal on their forehead will be surrounded by hosts of angels who will protect them day and night, and no one will have the power to destroy them. But the Lord also told him that the seal can be lost. He said those who have been sealed must cause the seals not to dry out and be strengthened with his precious blood. And how do we get the seal? Our Lord told Saint Gertrude of Hella that all those who frequently meditate on the vision of the divine face of the Lord will receive within them a brilliant ray of his divinity, 
the one who will illuminate their souls intimately so that they reflect the light of his face. While the mystic Michel Roderick says that it is enough to ask for the seal and the Lord will decide. And does this seal have any relationship with the Virgin Mary? In the Marian apparitions in Germany in 1946, to a 22-year-old girl named Barbara Roy, Our Lady revealed, I am the sign of the living God. I print my sign on the foreheads of my children. This should be understood in the sense that with the perfect consecration to Mary, she imprints on the souls of her consecrated persons her moral and spiritual imperfections and adds a material dimension. He said the star will pursue my sign, but my sign will defeat the star. The star is the fallen star of Lucifer, which brings us to the Proto-Evangelium Genesis 3 verse 15 where the woman crushes the head of the evil serpent. End of chapter 12 of the Apocalypse where the woman clothed with the sun is pregnant and is pursued by the dragon, that is the evil one, to devour her son. The woman gives birth and is protected by God and then the dragon dedicates itself to persecuting the woman's children, that is the male children of the Virgin Mary. Therefore, consecration to the Virgin Mary would leave a seal printed on those consecrated to Mary, promising liberation from the evil that may befall them from theoretical and moral error, from deviation, and from catastrophes of a spiritual and material nature. And how would sealing work for the end times? Again, Father Michel Roderick says that God will mark the faithful with a cross on their foreheads that only he will see, but occasionally he will allow some of his instruments to see those crosses, as happened with Father Michel himself who was allowed to see the crosses on the foreheads of some people when he was in a prayer group. This cross is what will allow entry to the refuges that God will enable for his chosen ones in due time because at the door of each refuge, there will be an angel who will allow entry only to those who have the cross. Well, there it is. Here we wanted to talk to you about what the seal of protection is for the faithful during the Great Tribulation, what it is, what it is for, and how to obtain it. And I would like to ask you if you believe that this sealing will effectively protect the faithful materially or would it be primarily something spiritual? Glory be to God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please stay and join us for prayers and devotions for the intentions of the realizations of this mark and for the preparedness of the people of God. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, Powerful Father Richard Hellman, November 18, 2016. This St. Michael's Prayer is the original version as written by Pope Leo XIII. Behold this primeval enemy and slayer of men has taken courage, transformed into an angel of light. He wanders about with all the multitude of wicked spirits invading the earth in order to blot out the name of God and of his Christ, to seize upon, slay, and cast into eternal perdition souls destined for the crown of eternal glory. This wicked dragon pours out as most impure flood the venom of his malice on men, his depraved mind, corrupt heart, his spirit of lying, impiety, blasphemy, his presential breath of impurity and of every vice and iniquity. These most crafty enemies have filled and inebriated with gall and bitterness the Church, the spouse of the Immaculate Lamb, and have laid impious hands on her most sacred possessions. In the holy place itself where has been set up the seat of the most holy people, Peter, and the chair of truth for the light of the world. They have raised the throne of their abominable impiety with the iniquitous design that when the pastor has been struck, the sheep may be scattered. Arise then, O invincible prince! bring help against the attacks of the lost spirits to the people of God and give them the victory. They venerate thee as their protector and patron in the Holy Church, glories as her defense. Against the malicious power of hell, to thee has God entrusted the souls of men to be established in heavenly beatitude. O oh, pray to the God of peace that he may put Satan under our feet, so far conquered that he may no longer be able to hold men in captivity and harm the Church. Offer our prayers in the sight of the Most High so that they may quickly consolate the mercies of the Lord and beating down the dragon, the ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, do thou again make him captive in the abyss that he may no longer seduce the nations. Amen. Behold the cross of the Lord. Be scattered, hostile powers. The Lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered. Let thy mercies be upon us, O Lord, as we have hoped in thee. 
O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we call upon thy holy name, and we humbly implore thy clemency that by the intercession of Mary ever Virgin, Immaculate in our Mother, and of the glorious Archangel Saint Michael, Thou wouldst deign to help us against Satan and all other unclean spirits who wander about the world for the injury of the human race and the ruin of souls. Amen. Pope Leo XIII, 1888. Walter 1933, Partial, Indulgence. The Most Holy Rosary is one of the greatest prayers in the history of the Church, garnished as it is with the testimony of saints and popes for the last thousand years. The only prayers that could be said to be greater are those of the Mass and the Divine Office. May God bless you and keep you, and may the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge. Amen.